Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lion's Den Show. And here's your host, Cody Robert Judy. Hello and welcome to the Lion's Den. I'm your host and your toast, Cody Robert Judy. Today is Sunday, November 29th, in the year of our Lord, 2010. Did you know in the United States Constitution, that is where the Lord Jesus Christ is mentioned? Yes, in the date that it was signed. In Article 7 of the original United States Constitution, it states, Done in convention by the unanimous consent of the states, present the seventh day of September in the year of our Lord, 1787 and of the independence of the United States of America the 12th in witness thereof we have hereunto subscribed our names interesting Christ had 12 apostles too and there were only 12 states that showed up <clears throat> the year of our Lord refers to whom it refers to our King and our Savior even Jesus Christ you wouldn't have a date without him. That shows you just how important the Constitution is and that we are set up with a Constitution Republic under our Lord in heaven. And we pray for our leaders to be inspired with the wisdom and understanding of our Lord. Occasionally, our leaders forget the righteousness of our Lord and begin drifting in their actions and in their directions. These are times we are set up for chastisement, which is only given so that we can get back on the right path. The Lord can withdraw his protection from us. The Lord can withdraw his spirit of wisdom and understanding, and it can happen for many reasons. Many want to accuse the leaders of failure, but they don't understand that the grace of the Lord's spirit may also be influenced with their own behavior so that as an accumulative force in the body of the people, choosing, say, actions that are not righteous, did you know that nearly 50% of the people in the midterm election chose not to vote? In fact, there's probably enough people that didn't vote that if they would have voted and they voted for me, I would have won the election for the U.S. Senate in Utah. That itself can affect the spirit your leaders are actually given by the Lord. When righteousness departs from the people, what is left to prevail? What is left? What is left? Well, it sure isn't right. <laughs> These are the times you will see prophets of the Lord thrown in prison for expressing the word of God in chastisement more especially to the people in the church. In Isaiah 29:21, which was also had on the record of 2 Nephi 27:32 of the Book of Mormon, also abbreviated as BOM or BOM, as we read, woes. Now, what are woes? Well, woes can be all your sorrows and your strife. Woes can also be interpreted as pronouncements of chastisement. As in, I pronounce this terrible thing upon you or about you. Now, I'm an old horse trainer, too, and when I say, whoa, that tells my horse to stop what he's doing. More especially if he's running away. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's spelled a little different. We're looking for faults. I'll give you that one. <laughs> so, we read... Isaiah 29:21 Woes, woes, woes be unto those that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth at the gate and turn aside a just for a thing of naught. And in verse 24 we say or read that they that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmur shall learn doctrine. Now, while in a brief form I have excused the leader's spirit or actions based on the people, there are times when a leader has a choice to make on whether to do right or to do wrong 
and he alone is responsible for that decision. The two examples I want to compare right now are Barack Hussein Obama and Howard W. Hunter. Barack Hussein Obama has minced words with the people of the United States, but he hasn't done it in a church where the broadest of interpretations that can be religiously imagined or thought of uh, as far as protections are given to us by our First Amendment, which declares in part, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech. Mr. Obama has said he was a native-born citizen, and as a constitutional lawyer, he knew perhaps better than most United States citizens that native-born and natural-born citizen meant two different things when it came to the qualifications of our Constitution uh, in which declares for our president. The biggest difference between native-born and natural-born are that native-born refers to a place that you were born. Obama says he was born in Hawaii, although he has never been proven. He has never proven that with a long-form birth certificate that certifies with a doctor's signature all that is provided on the long-form birth certificate. Natural-born refers to a place and two parents who are citizens of the United States. The reason that particular qualification was reserved as a qualification for the U.S. president was that it makes an accounting for both nature and nurture affecting or effects upon a child and it insulates with two generations of descendancy the United States. Obama's father was British so while he may have been qualified as a US senator he is not qualified with the more strenuous constitutional qualifications for US president. Shifting gears now to President Howard W. Hunter a one-time president of the LDS Church, now deceased, he was a leading figure in the LDS Church 17 years ago under Ezra Taft Benson, who was very near death. President Hunter was also a lawyer by trade. He understood the First Amendment of the United States Constitution of freedom of speech in a religious meeting, and he also knew very well that as they are directed and guided by the Holy Spirit, these are the meetings, and that no one should be cast out from our public meetings, which are held before the world. Now, when I leaped up at the fireside, moved by the Holy Spirit of God not to harm anyone or destroy any property with my Book of Mormon, abbreviated B-O-M or BOM, which the Mormons say is not fake, for them to say I had an explosive device representing anything else is a lie. Saying I had a fake bomb is also a lie, and it is said to destroy the truth. To say that they don't believe in the Book of Mormon, and it's a lie for them to say it's not abbreviated B-O-M, which spells bomb. This was a religious meeting that Utah Constitution goes even further in protecting religious sentiment. Certainly in religious meetings, religious sentiment is expressed, and that goes to protecting basically any speech and any quote-unquote word, especially when the word is directed towards chastisement, as we read in Isaiah. And that is exactly what my speech read. It was a chastisement for LDS church members because of the pride of the church which President Uchtdorf, by the way, has recently resurrected in his last conference address. The whole incident at the Marriott Center, February 7, 1993, was recorded and copyrighted by the LDS Church Presidency. And the LDS Church Presidency maintains that copyright. The Presidency of the Church gave a copy of that tape to the prosecuting attorney who gave it to the Utah State District Court judge. That judge was also a bishop in the LDS Church under Howard W. Hunter's authority. I'll bet you didn't know that. The judge denied me a copy of the evidence used against me. 
Also, later, the tape was copyrighted by the presidency of the church, that same tape, it resurfaced to the Utah Board of Pardons and Parole, which was now subject to the public. And KTVX spent probably $10,000 in legal fees trying to get a copy of the tape based on it. It was a public record. That request was denied based on the church copyright held by the LDS Church Presidency. So we have a union of church and state in a matter of state criminal prosecution that was derived in a religious meeting. When I wanted a copy of the tape as a witness for me, the prosecutor and the judge told me I had to get it from the church presidency. So I had to sue the church presidency for the evidence in my criminal case. Rather than just give it to me, they fought it. They fought it clear to the United States Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court held that evidence used against you in a court of law didn't affect that many people, so they didn't hear it. So your constitutional rights of evidence and to have a compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in your favor declared in the United States Constitution Amendment 6 are hanging by a hair. I served 3,018 days incarcerated asking myself why does the LDS Church Presidency fight me so hard in obtaining a witness? I have suffered the felony on my record to this day and all the public scrutiny and malcontent that goes along with that. Why? Well, the tape was copyrighted to protect from the public eyes the beating I took and to protect those who pepper maced, punched, and kicked me and left me unconscious on the floor and dragged like an animal to the cheers of the saints. They witnessed exactly what Joseph Smith went through being drug out of his home, tarred and feathered. They became the mob and they hid it, sweeping the dirt under the carpet. All the while I was framed and the actions against me fell under religious persecution because it happened in a religious meeting. President Howard W. Hunter died a coward for not standing up for the Constitution, which as a lawyer he knew and as a saint he trampled. This record could have been different if he had gone to bat for me, if he had excused me, even defended me, though perhaps not agreeing with me, understanding the truth of my words, the truth of the Book of Mormon, the truth of it not being a fake bomb, but a real canon, abbreviated B-O-M, in which most saints will declare, it's dynamite. You can't get away from the truth. It will only be hid for so long. Everything will be revealed. And like Obama in a parallel of the emperor with no clothes and everyone saying his clothes are so fine, calling him President Obama, when he was actually constitutionally naked, President Howard W. Hunter cries on the other side of the veil, suffering eons of hell, wishing, wishing for relief from his hell, which can only come through a recompense of the wrongs. That is the mercy of God in which the current LDS leaders hold in their hands for President Howard W. Hunter. My time of 3,018 days and 17 years of persecution is minuscule compared to what he is suffering on the other side of the veil. My question is, what level of mercy do you have for President Howard W. Hunter? For on the other side of the veil, he is pleading for your mercy because this dirt under the carpet, this stain has not gone away. <laughs>